Hello, Bass family, and welcome to Everything Bass. Uh, today is the second in the series on showing you how to play specific chords on the bass. Um, the previous video was for the major seven chord, and if you haven't seen that, just go back to my channel, um, look for it, and make sure you've added that into your plane. Um, today we're moving on to the minor seven um, chord. To know the intervals of the, to the minor seven chord and to get more into it, I would recommend that you check out my video on the minor seven arpeggio. And that will go through a bunch of different ways to practice it so you really know the notes. Because I'm showing you shapes and that's a great place to start. Don't feel any pressure or anything. But ultimately you want to go beyond the shape. But the shape's a good starting point and that's what we're doing today. Uh, if you're a Patreon subscriber, um, or if you're not, you follow the link in the description. You'll go uh, right to my Patreon channel. Find the post uh, for major minor seven chords on the bass, and you will um, be able to download some neck diagrams. On the neck diagrams, I show you how to play the C minor seven and the F minor seven, but you're gonna learn real quickly that these shapes can be moved all up and down the fingerboard, so you actually have a lot of musicality in just two shapes. So let's go over the first one. Now, even though the chart's doing it on the eighth fret, I'm gonna do it on the 10th fret. So I'll be at my three dolphins here. I don't know if you can see there's three, three dolphins. Um, that is my 12th fret. So that's my E on the E string. And for this chord, I'm going to use my index finger to play that. So I'm fretting with my index finger. Take my middle finger and I put it on the D on the 12th fret. And then I take my ring finger and I tuck it back and I play the G on the 12th fret. So this is nice. This is an easy chord to memorize because they're all in the same fret, like this bar right here. But you're not playing the A string. Now what are these intervals? I'm playing the root, the minor 7, and the minor third an octave higher than it would normally show up um, in the scale. And I get this sound. A little bit, it's cool. It's a cool, you know, minor seven chord, chord, chords are cool. Sorry, can't talk. Um, and so, you know, very easy to learn and very easy to memorize. And I think it's easy to fret. Now, some people might say, can I just bar it? Technically you can, but I think that's also, well, it's tiring. Like uh, I've been playing 30 years and that tires me out to bar a lot. Plus I think I can get individual control over each note a little better and uh, it's a little cleaner sounding to me. All right, so now let's go, what if the root's on the A string? You know, what would that be? Because we don't have on a four string bass, we don't have enough shape. Now, of course, six string, seven string bass, you can use that same uh, pattern I just showed you. But let's say, for the sake of argument, you're on a four string bass. So we're gonna play this time with our middle finger on our fretting hand. We're gonna hold down the 12th fret on the A. The index finger stretch back a little bit. We're gonna play that C. And then with the ring finger, it's actually so nice because on most people that I've taught this to, when you play the uh, root with your middle finger, the ring finger is actually right lined up over the minor seven there. So we got root, minor third, minor seven. Now it's a little higher in pitch, so you have a little more definition. Here's it. Here's the E minor seven, root on the E string, A minor seven, root on the A string. Now that's a very cool. I didn't even think about talking about this, but you notice that when I'm playing the E minor seven, sorry, that's sloppy. Um, I've got the index middle ring. When I go to play the A minor 7, I just invert or I flip the index in the ring, the, uh, sorry, index in the middle. Gosh, that's now the middle is on it, on the root, index fingers on third. Now why I say that is I don't have to move my ring finger. So when I'm playing this, see how my ring finger stays down? And it's actually a pretty good exercise to just kind of go back and forth a little bit and then move it around. Be, you know, get very good at being able to move it and up and down the neck. Lower you go, it can be a little bit harsh sounding. It's hard to hear all the definition that low. That's why you'll see me play most of my chords eight frets or higher. And I usually use just uh, my bridge pickup. Boy, there's a lot of glare in today's lighting. Um, so there you go. Um, so that's the minor seven chord. So focus on this, be able to play it. Um, if you want to get more value out of the exercise, be sure you're saying the root name. Don't don't just move up and down willy nilly. Like if I go here, I say, okay, what is? Oh, that's the C. So that's a C minor seven. Because now you're getting collateral benefit. Instead of just memorizing the shape and playing the chord, you're also getting to know your fingerboard better, and that's good in, in every way. Now you're also going to want to do an additives type study. 
if you've done the mi major seven chord and you've got that down and now you've learned the minor seven chord we don't want to ignore previous lessons and let they let them atrophy so that we're not as good with them so now it's a good exercise to like pick a root let's say a g and i do a g major seven then i play a g minor seven now what's good there is you're also starting to see what changes what changes to make a major seven into a minor seven this reinforces theory so let's take a look at that real quick so on the major seven i'm playing root major seven major third on the minor seven i'm playing root minor seven minor third so it's a good quick little bit you've just learned about theory that the you know to make a major seven into a minor seven you're taking the third and the seven intervals and dropping them a half step or one fret on your instrument all this is just good to be aware be actively learning try to look at every possible thing um, to really understand it um, all right so that's the minor seven shorter video but that's good because now you can just turn off the video crank up your amp start playing some um, chords try different as i said last time uh, with the major seven video try playing different patterns and, and finger it differently or chime it together try different rhythms you know let your hand hand hit the string to kind of add a percussive element you know toy with that a little bit and see what it comes out and you might be surprised as this is also good for setting a foundation for you to improvise the scales and the arpeggios over them record yourself playing the chords let it play back and then just go to town yeah it's a lot of fun so my brothers and sisters in bass thank you so much for joining me today please please like share subscribe to the videos as i said i'm not really concerned about monetizing this channel but it really helps that i know that if i get likes on a video if i get a lot of comments then i'm in the right area if i'm not addressing what you need to learn right now some questions you've had about playing the bass put them in the comments and i see them i see everything not no one else <laughs> This is a company of one person, so I uh, see all the videos my, or all the comments myself, and I can respond to it, and I can plan videos. So I look forward to that. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you guys are healthy. I hope you guys are happy. I hope you guys are becoming better bass players every day, and I will see you at the next video. Thanks so much.